welcome. My name's Suzanne from Nonstop Paper Crafts. Welcome back to my craft room. So we are back for part two of making and building this lap book. I am using the old school detective kit from Victoria Designs. Um, it is a stunning kit. We've already started using some of the papers and as we go through you're going to see more and more lovely, wonderful examples from the kit. So just a reminder, um, we've only done really the base. Um, we stuck on the uh, outside pages so far. I've put my closure on, but I haven't attached any string or anything yet because obviously I wanna see how thick this gets before I start doing that. So I've left that as it was. Um, I did finish off this part of the cover though. So um, I can't remember if you saw me stick down these pieces. So I've stuck these down. I also put missing person um, and I picked out a few other sort of words and things from um, there's a whole page full of different words to do with um, investigations and detectives and stuff so I've stuck a few of them there um, I then circled the places that were near the pins that I've made using the brads and then I've stuck the mini photos of people who are my victims uh, and that's how I've kind of finished that one off uh, that's as far as I've got I haven't done anything else to the inside because I thought that's what we're going to move on today before we do though, I had so much fun making this one and if you remember I did do a bit of a boo-boo because -boo, originally it was supposed to have gone uh, this way round and then there'll be a notebook here and the person, the detective could write notes. Um, I had done this a little high for my liking which is why I flipped it over uh, and as I said in the last video this actually suits me better because I am a lefty so I would write my notes here while looking at the case files to my right. So this suits me, but because I originally wanted it right-handed, I made another one. And here it is. So again, I've only gone as far as we have on the other one. I haven't gone any further. Now I was doing a completely different project with these book covers, which is why you can see some other fabric back here. Um, but that project went completely wrong. It was a complete disaster. So I've tried to repurpose um, the covers, but I've done the same thing. So I've used the um, black book cloth tape again for the spines. So I've done the same thing. Um, again, I've used the same papers. So we've got this one on the front, the closure. Again, no string attached until we know how thick this is gonna be. This one does open out this way. Uh, this is slightly different. I've got my pins in different places um, and I've got different words, but um, essentially it's the same on the front. And then again, on the back, I've used the same paper. Okay, so I've got to the same spot, but like I said, I was having so much fun with it, I thought, yeah, actually, I'm going to make two. So this one's a right-handed one. So I'll have the notepad here, and then obviously my other one is the left-handed one. Okay, so let's put this one away a minute. So I thought we could focus on today, um, I was thinking about doing the notepad, but then I thought, actually, I want, kind of want to get started on these main pages, because the notepad, I don't feel, would take me particularly long to do um, and what I was thinking as I said this is going to be the notepad over here uh, where the detective would be writing notes and this would be their case file so I was thinking I might have on this sort of section all of the notes about the victims so who they were how they died um, crime scenes that kind of thing going on over here and then on this side would be the suspects and all the wanted posters and all that kind of stuff over here. So it's kind of split into two sections. So we're gonna work on the base of this one and getting this side kind of put together. Um, and I have been printing out some of the other pages which I'd like to show you first. So these are some of the pages that I want to use on this side. So I really love this one. Um, it looks like it's out of um, a paper or something and you can see all the creases and folds in there which I think just look absolutely fabulous. So I really like that and obviously we've got our detectives and they're outside a creepy castle. So I thought that would be really, really cool because that could be a crime scene. Uh, and then obviously with the magnifying glass there. So that's why I thought this would be good for this side. Um, I've got this one which is uh, just a pattern but again I like the blue it kind of goes in quite nicely with the uh, rest of the theme that we're doing 
Uh, this one's just a newspaper, uh, which again, I just really like all the text on there. I really like the fonts. And then I'm going to use this one. Now, anybody that's watched me for a length of time may notice I don't tend to use people in any of my crafts. Um, whenever I have a kit that has people, I either skip the pages with the people in or I cover them up with a pocket or something. Um, I'm probably the only person or one of the only people out there, I know of one other who feels the same as I do, um, but I know people absolutely covet these um, vintage photographs. I think they are as creepy as hell. I'm going to try and lift this lady up. I mean, I'm sorry, look at that face. That looks like something out of a horror movie. How scary and terrifying is that? Uh, same as this gentleman down here. Look at those eyes. It's so frightening. Yeah, to me, this, yeah, it's just scary looking at it. However, obviously, I'm doing a detective file. I kind of need people involved. I need somebody that's going to be murdered and somebody that's going to be a suspect. So I do need people. So I'm kind of biting the bullet here and I'm going to use this page um, on this section as freaky as these people may look to me. But yeah, I am not one for vintage photographs. I think it's because they don't tend to smile. I mean, this lady, these two are kind of starting to have a hint of a grin on their face, but I just think it's the seriousness of the expressions. And as I say, just the color of the eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, just creepy. So that page is gonna go at the bottom for now. Uh, and then obviously we'll revisit that when we actually need it for the base. Okay, so what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to pick one of these pages that will be the actual base page that will be stuck down to this hardcover and obviously covering this fabric. And I think for that one, I really liked um, this page here. So I'm probably going to use this. I am going to need to trim it a little bit because, as we said last time, this um, isn't uh, high enough for a full A4 piece of paper. The width is perfect to still give me a little bit of a border either side but it's just the the height so I'll have to trim a little bit off of that one but that's going to be my base page and then I'm going to have a kind of accordion fold coming out so to create my accordion fold I just have these um, file folders um, it's just one massive tab though it's not got obviously the um, you normally have a bit of a tab and then it goes in and it lines up with this bottom piece these do not do these. These were really, really cheap, um, but they're sturdy enough to obviously make my accordion fold coming off of this. So all I'm going to do is just line this up and think about how I want it to fold. So I think I'm going to have it this way round. I'm just going to open this up a moment. So obviously I know that this width is the width that I want it to be. So with this fold, I want it just in slightly, otherwise it's going to be too near the edge, I think. So I'm gonna have it just in slightly so that you can also pick it up. And with a pencil, I am just going to make a mark along that edge. And then I'm going to find that mark on this edge. And I'm going to then... I'm just guesstimating. So basically what I'm going to do is this back bit is going to be folded backwards because this is the bit that's going to tuck underneath this piece of paper to make the first hinge. Then this already obviously has a hinge, but I want a third piece to kind of go over. And I don't mind that it's not the same size. So I'm just figuring out possibly about there. So this one's going to be a short panel. This one's going to be slightly wider. Then obviously you've got this big panel um, back here. So I think that's how I'm going to do it. It'll probably make more sense once I've got my scoreboard out and I've done all my folds, um, exactly what I've done. Um, but the main thing you need to think about is obviously having it wide enough so you've got just a slight gap just so you're able to obviously grab it and lift it up um, and then this is the bit that's going to tuck underneath to create the hinge 
and then obviously if you wanted another panel that's going to be the same size you would just attach another panel on top but I'm just going to fold this one over so that I've got a short panel a medium panel and then the wide one I hope that makes sense right let's get the scoreboard out okay so um that was quite nice actually that lined up quite nicely so at nine and a half is where i'm going to score now unfortunately this folder comes out below my um scoreboard but that's okay because actually i will need to chop a bit off the bottom anyway so that's not a problem in fact i might do that bit first Right, sorry, just to confuse everybody. Okay, I am just going to trim this to the right size. Now, if we're going by the same sort of sizes that we've done these, I'm just seeing how tall those are. So they're just over 11 inches. They were 11 and then, is it 2 eighths or 2 sixteenths? I don't know. I don't really use inches very often, apart from when I'm doing journal making, because everybody else seems to be using inches. But yeah, it's just over um, 11 inches. So I'm going to trim this down first and then this will fit better on my scoreboard. Okay, so that's a bit better. Now it all fits on my scoreboard. So again then, I'm just going to line that up with the nearest mark, which is nine inches. I'm just going to score down here. Okay, and then that is going to fold backwards. And that's going to hinge underneath that back page and then this one uh, where's my pencil gone hiding I'm just going to mark because I have to score it from the other side so about there this is going to be my accordion so that will all sort of come out because this will be tucked underneath that base page and then it will lay over that base page like that okay so that's how it's going to look and then obviously you can open it out section by section or pull the whole thing out okay Burnish those folds just to make sure that they are nice and creased. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, okay, so that's that. So all I need to do now then is to start deciding what papers are going to go where. Right, so I've already said I want this one at the base, so I'm going to very quickly measure that bit. So again, we want a slight border. Now, do I chop off at the top? Or oh, I might need to do a bit of both. A bit of both, because I want to obviously keep that in there. So I lost my pencil again, there it is. Little bit at the top there and also a bit down the bottom okay so i've got to trim off those bits right then this will obviously be sitting on the top 
and I think my measuring might be bad because actually I still need to trim some off of this because that is still overhanging so let's make a mark about there so that's still got to be trimmed right then to decide what I want to wear okay I also have these off cuts from before as well so I could use bits of these so let's have a think oh scary faces where should we have the scary faces <laughs> um, do we have them peeking out from behind this flap oh that scary woman's just going to make it in there isn't she i'm just seeing where that fold is and it's roughly where that marker is so we're going to have scary lady in there but that's okay that's okay unless i lift that up and i could end up chopping her head off <laughs> that would look even more freaky and more from a horror film wouldn't it um okay so yes i think we're going to put scary people there since this is obviously all about people that have gone missing so I'm just trying to figure out how I can do this without having headless figures so again I'm going to come in slightly oh is that going to probably slice the top of her head off isn't it okay we're going to have to go a little bit higher a little bit higher and then I think I've literally just done that in the same place. No, it is slightly higher. Okay, so that marker there, and if that's where they are, then to be in line for where I need to trim it down here, I've got to cut there as well. Okay, right, and then how wide do we need it? Again, I'm not going right up to the crease because obviously we want it to be able to fold nicely. So just beforehand, so about there. Okay, so that's where I'm going to cut that one. So that's this page done. I'm just going to rub out my pencil marks. So I'm just going to put a little tick there to know that I've done that one. Okay, so I think I quite like. I don't know, I quite like the newspaper. See, I've got the newspaper on the base, so I don't want the newspaper here. So I'm thinking maybe then on this side, I can have the newspaper. So I think that's what I'll do. Um, I'm just gonna trim this though, because obviously I can't see where that marker is on this side. So I'm just gonna very quickly cut that down. Right, that makes it easier. Okay, so this side is where I want my newspaper. So. I will probably take it off a little bit on this side. Oops. And then also take a little bit off of that side. And then, whoops. Seem to be all thumbs today. Right, okay, and slight border, and then cutting a little bit off down the bottom here. Right, so that's that panel. Uh, so, tick, we've done that one. Okay, so let's have a look. So if that's what I've got here, I then want a contrasting colour, so I might then have the blue. So this panel will be blue, and I do like that writing in the corner, so we'll keep that. Okay, and if there's the fold, we're going to come in slightly, oops. and then slightly so that's that panel tick 
Right, so I've done that one, done that one. We've done that one. So all we need to do now then are these three. So this one's scary faces. So we could maybe, because again, thinking of contrast, let's just have a little look. Scary faces and types. Let's pick up. Yeah, no, I think this one. So we can have this one on this side. Uh, oh, what was we having there? The newsprint, wasn't it? Hang on. I wanted the newsprint on this big panel. Will that look okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep, yeah, back to it. Oops. So it's going to be really hard to see my markings with the. Uh, All this text. I'm actually going to do it on the white side because it doesn't really matter. It's all the same, isn't it? So I'm going to do it this way round, just so I can actually see where I'm making my marks. And then at the bottom, about there. Okay, so tick, that's you done. And then on this side, that side and this side, okay. So. Um. Um. Okay, I might print off another blue just to add some contrast because I'm going to have that one there and then that typo there so it just kind of breaks it up a bit I think so I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to print off another one of those for that panel so that'll be that one done so I just need another little bit for here so what have we got faces isn't it so I think I might use this bit here. So let's have a look. Stick them over there. Okay, so now that's all my pieces sorted, I am going to print off that other blue one. I am then going to ink around and uh, sew around the edges and then we can get to sticking all of this down. So I'm gonna start sticking all of these bits down then. So this one was going to be my base piece on here. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is stick this panel to the back. But obviously, I also want to make sure it's got room to fold. So I'm going to do it upside down just so I can kind of see that it's roughly in the middle. So there is a slight gap top and bottom. I'm going to glue that down. So you'll see here there is a slight gap where I start folding it over, but that's fine. I'm just going to use my glue. Stick that down. Okay, so it works just like that. So it just hinges off the back of that page. 
Okay, and now I'm going to glue this page down to this base. So again, applying glue all over um, and then attaching it to the base. So then just making sure it's the right way up. Okay, stick this. Okay, so that's that bit, and then obviously we've got this thing folding out and folding out that way. Excellent, right, so now to just finish off sticking down all the other pieces. So let's just try and remember what we had where. So I had this one going on this side. Stuck to bits under here, let's move those. Okay, then on this side we had scary faces. Okay, so that's that side. Then here, add this bit, that bit. Last piece. There's the top there. Okay, so that's it all now finished. So this is how it is looking. Opening up this way. And um, what we're going to do in the next video is I'm going to start applying all of the pockets and tucks and things that I want to go in here and all of the ephemera because this side, if you remember, is going to be all of my uh, victims and what happened to them, the crime scenes, things like that. So I've got um, lots of ideas of how I want to kind of lay this side out. So that will be in the next video. Um, and then we're going to start working on this side, which will be my suspects the killers um and then obviously there will be things like that and all that ephemera so yeah next video we're going to work on this one get this part completed and then we can move on to this side here well thank you very much for sticking with me again today and watching this build i do hope that you're enjoying how it's coming together 
um, and you're going to stick with me for the next video when we start actually filling this side. I must say I'm really enjoying this project, I'm really enjoying using these papers, so um, yeah, it definitely won't be long until the next video is out. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful crafty day and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much now. Bye bye. Thank you.